Hello everyone. As you may know, the TI-84 Plus CE is a very popular calculator across the US and several other countries. But does popularity mean durability? Let's talk about some of the common failure points of the TI-84 Plus CE, check out the battery life and the performance. Before I get into the comparison, I'd like to describe how I've been using my 5-year-old calculator throughout its life. Not only has it gone through the typical high school math classes, as some of you may know, you can program this calculator. I found great fun programming it, which means I've stressed out the buttons, USB port, and the internal components far more than the average person. Let's see just how it held up to my heavy daily use and compare it to this brand new TI-84 Plus CE. Let's check out the shell first. Honestly, it's pretty durable and scratch resistant. You'll notice I do have some noticeable grooves and long scratches along the back of the calculator in the slide case. However, you can avoid these scratches if you don't store your calculator in a pocket that has a metal zipper like I did. If you just keep it in a soft pocket by itself, or ideally in a protective case, then you'll be able to keep your calculator looking brand new for several years. As you know, no matter how well you try and protect your belongings, accidents do happen. So how well does the calculator handle drops? Fortunately, it can handle several drops from desk height onto the hard floor just fine. Although there may be some scuffs, the shell will look fine and the calculator will still function perfectly. Anything higher than a desk doesn't settle well with it though, and you may start seeing chips or cracks in the shell. The calculator will still function just as well though. What about accidental spills though? Unfortunately, the TI-84 Plus CE was not designed with any water resistance in mind, so keep your drinks away from your atho mark if you're prone to spill. I'll quickly cover some of the other parts of the shell that are worth mentioning. All the screws are firmly in place, and the battery screws physically can't even fall out which is very nice for longevity. The RAM reset button used for when the calculator glitches out has stood up to my constant abuse like a champ, and the USB port and charging light still function perfectly fine despite my heavy daily use. Good job TI, you definitely chose your materials well. So far this review has been a positive one and most of the cosmetic damage can be avoided but there are still parts that aren't so positive, particularly the glue used to hold everything down. You may have noticed I still have all the rubber feet on my calculator. I'm only lucky to still have them. It's very common for the glue under the feet to just give away so you lose a rubber foot. I nearly lost two of them before I replaced all the manufacturer's glue with super glue. Fortunately, TI does offer first party replacement feet so you can buy some whenever they eventually wear out and don't keep your calculator in place. Another spot where the glue is suboptimal is the LCD protector. It's very common for the weak glue to allow the protector to come loose and let dust particles in. Not only are the particles annoying, but it's extremely difficult to clean them. When I attempted this myself, I ended up accidentally smearing my replacement super glue all over the LCD. Others have attempted it themselves and also failed to clean it up. While we're focusing on the screen protector, I'd like to draw your attention to the scuffs and grooves. These are unavoidable if you used a slide case to protect the front of your calculator. You will notice similar deep grooves on the back of the calculator due to the tabs on the slide case. Not only does the slide case leave scuffs, it also just collects disgusting gunk that needs to be cleaned out every few months. Now unless you're using a protective case, I don't suggest not using the slide case. It's imperative to keeping your buttons and LCD safe. It will also take the brunt of the impact if you drop your calculator too. I'd also like to mention that although the slide case can now be removed with minimal effort, it has never fallen off on its own, and I highly suggest using it. I just wish it was designed better so it wouldn't touch the calculator while moving it. Now let's get back to some good stuff. The buttons in the button labels are very durable. Like I said earlier, I use my calculator far more than the average person, yet the buttons in every single label still look perfectly fine. I would like to mention that the rubber membrane underneath the keypad has been known to break on a few calculators. Although this is yet to cripple a calculator, it has caused false button presses and is overall just an annoyance that is nearly impossible to fix. Fortunately, it's not a widespread issue and my calculator button still functions just fine. That's all for the outside of the calculator, now how about the internals? I'll start with the part most likely to die at first on any device, the battery. I'm pleased to say that the battery health for my calculator is still very good. Compared to my new calculator, the battery is about 80% health. This means I can get 24 hours of non-stop use with my old one, and 30 hours of non-stop use with my new one. This equates to a couple weeks of normal use on a full charge. One downside to the battery though, is it's not used in any other common device. 
therefore better battery technology will likely not make its way to this specific size of battery. Calculators such as the HP Prime use batteries from smartphones, so you can upgrade its battery as the smartphone's batteries get better and better. So battery health is still good, but what about the performance? I actually did a series of benchmarks two years ago that compares every OS designed for this calculator against each other to see which one was fastest. I recently redid all those tests because newer OSs had been released. When I compared the two-year-old results to my current results, it was clear my calculator hadn't slowed down at all. This is especially impressive since most devices are horribly outdated, unsupported, or slow after five years. My TI-84 Plus CE can still run the latest OS with most functions operating at the same speed. So performance longevity and software support is still good, but how does the performance compare to newer TI-84 Plus CEs? Well, just like most companies do with their products, TI refreshed their TI-84 Plus CE lineup with faster storage. This means newer TI-84 Plus CE is over three times faster than my old calculator in most functions. Currently, all apps compatible with the new CEs are compatible with the old ones, but since this is a relatively recent refresh, it's possible that new apps and programs, especially if Python ever makes its way over from the TI-83 Premium CE, won't be compatible with the old TI-84 Plus CEs. You may be wondering why I said most functions earlier. Well, that's because of the new features TI added to the new CE's boot code and OS, which now revalidates the OS whenever you RAM reset. This causes the new CE's to be much slower than the old CE at resetting. TI also slowed down entering exam mode, so old CE's on older OS's can enter exam mode far quicker than new CE's. Lastly, old CEs on older OSs can access functions that new CEs cannot, such as the ASM84CE PRGM token and the ability to downgrade to any OS. So there you go. Overall, the TI-84 Plus CE is built like a tank and will definitely last you through high school and college. If you're looking to buy a used TI-84 Plus CE, you most likely don't need to worry about it arriving in terrible shape. The calculator will be receiving software support for quite a while. However, each new operating system comes with more and more restrictions, so it may be wise to stay on the OS your calculator was shipped with or downgrade it. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or concerns, please leave a comment and I'll be happy to help. Have a good day.